uh, we'll, we'll start by just introducing ourselves, Carmel. Hi, so um, I'm Carmel Walsh. So I'm the director of um, E um, Research Infrastructure and Services at ARDC, Australian Research Data Commons. And basically, I head up the team that manages the Nectar Research Cloud and also our storage, national storage in relation to data retention. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Carmel. And um, I'm Stephen Manos. Um, I am with the Australian Biocommons. Um, we are building um, national bioinformatics infrastructure for research. Um, and I have about 10 years of history in uh, deploying, building, operating, research computing, um, research cloud, um, research data infrastructure, um, primarily at the University of Melbourne um, since around 2010. So we'll, um, we'll, we'll get stuck into this. Um, Carmel and I have, have, have um, uh, about 15 minutes to to pitch the idea of Arcos to you and some of the history, and then and then you know we'll, we'll kind of get into some bit of Q and A and and just feedback and and any really any questions you you want to ask um, around Arcos specifically, but I guess also the broader cloud um, computing um, HPC ecosystem in, in Oz. Um, so I'll just start by saying that Arcos is a community, um, and Arcos has published a paper on the community and the community's needs around con container technologies in research. So um, we'll remind you now and remind you again at the end of the talk that there really are two resources for you to look at and to contribute to. One of them is the Arcos website, arcos.aidc.ed.au, where we have our resources, we have video recordings of talks, and we also have um, mailing lists and, um, and, and other ways to access the Arcos community. Um, thanks, Andy, for posting the link. Um, and we also have a paper that we've published, which I put the bit.ly link there for, um, which again will give you an idea of the, the challenges uh, and priorities of the community um, here in Oz. So, moving on to this, where did Arcos come from? Well, I, I guess much like um, uh, cloud came about 10 or 15 years ago, past HPC, the next thing that researchers were going to start basing their research on and building um, workloads on, much like what you just indicated, David, are containers. Um, and there was, I guess, a movement and a question of, well, how can the national research community um, come together around containers? What are the challenges? What are the shared opportunities? What can we do together? So the idea of kind of building a community around um, container and container technologies in research um, uh, was born really in, in, in late mid to late 2019 and it culminated in a, a, a major kind of community meetup over in Perth um, in early 2020 um, before uh, just before um, COVID hit and that was I guess around 40 people um, turned up to that meeting to really think about what are what are the shared challenges what are the shared opportunities around containers um, over a two-day workshop um, since then, um, that community has been formalized through, you know, working groups and steering committees. Um, we did a big survey of uh, the community, which included various organizations, universities, um, ARDC, the Nectar Research Cloud, Arnet, and so on to say, well, what, what are the challenges? What are you focusing on? What would you like to get out of a, out of a more concerted community effort? And this kind of culminated in the Arcos paper um, that was first published in August 2020, um, and then and then republished in October 2020. Then late last year, um, through the work of and uh, leadership of the ARDC um, and Andy and Carmel and others, we finalised the Arcos project plan in response to those community requirements. And I keep using the word community a lot, and that's very deliberate because this really has been a community developed and community um, driven uh, uh, initiative. So it's worth um, just kind of taking a step back um, and thinking about well, what are containers and, um, and what is Kubernetes. And um, really containers just simply provide a lightweight execution environment for software and applications. Um, they're basically an image uh, that packages up pre-compiled software with all of its dependencies and libraries and even data um, into a single bundle that's effectively isolated from the environment that it runs in. Um, they provide a, a way to share libraries, code, configurations, and data amongst researchers, and it really does away with um, with code compilation and library dependencies and blah, blah, blah. And it does promise a ease of use and a transportability, but 
although that's the ambition, it's definitely not always the case. Generally speaking, there are two things we package up or do with containers. One of them is we want to containerize entire tool sets, um, where a whole set of tools um, or individual software tools or pipelines are included in a single container. And, um, and the other thing is a, a single application or a very specific function um, is built into a container, and this is referred to as a microservice. And in the container world, there's really two types of container formats that tend to be used that you would have heard of, Docker and Singularity. And they have their own standard runtime that they run within, and the runtime is the environment that the container runs inside of. And these two runtimes tend to uh, favor or target two different use cases or two different security postures. Docker tends to favor isolation and more kind of cloud native, administrative, scaled up applications. Whereas Singularity, I guess, is more what you'd see uh, in research um, around HPC centers, where it tends to favor integration and command line applications, um, funky hardware access like for GP GPUs, and tends to operate better in multi-tenanted environments. So, of course, if you want to kind of use containers, um, then you need to be able to um, manage them. And uh, you need a system that you can configure containers with, you can um, manage their life cycle within, um, you maintain them, scale them out, schedule them, and so on. And this whole process is referred to as container orchestration. Now, Kubernetes is one such orchestrator, and it provides a standard, I guess, model of describing what a um, container deployment or a container orchestration system looks like. Um, today, Kubernetes is the absolute de facto standard for container management, um, and it's supported across a, a wide range of um, uh, private, commercial, and community cloud environments. And it promises this interoperability, I guess, across these different environments. But even with these standards and this promise of interoperability, there are complexities and there are incompatibilities. Uh, differences in how compute and storage um, and networking is ultimately implemented by the underlying platform means that not all Kubernetes um, and container deployments are functionally equivalent and generally they're not very compatible. So stepping back from a research infrastructure lens or a researcher's lens, um, uh, no two instances of Kubernetes deployments, whether it's at, on the Nectar Research Cloud or Amazon Web Services or Azure Cloud or Rnet or even you know, ARDC's Magnum service, none of these deployments are guaranteed to be functionally equivalent and be able to support the containers that you're running. But as researchers, particularly researchers who are working in national collaborations or national consortia, um, they need to be able to readily, more readily than ever, port their tool set to other colleagues, other infrastructures and other resources. And as a result, the deployment and ongoing management of Kubernetes um, for research is challenging as a result. So, through Arcos, we, we engaged, as I said, the community at large and, and really asked around their um, current and expected future use cases for, uh, for containers. Um, and details of all of this are contained in the Arcos paper. And based on these um, use cases, we derived four of the main drivers that we're seeing for containers um, and Kubernetes. So the first driver is that they, they really want to use, people, operators and researchers really want to use Kubernetes and containers to minimize infrastructure complexity through more isolated software environments. And as said, really software is contained within the container um, and all the dependencies are also wrapped up in that as well. So it tends to do away with these system-wide um, conflicting dependencies. It also allows you, the second one there, easier code distribution and more portable code because you can wrap everything up into a single package. Um, containers really inherently um, support reproducibility and reusability um, and you kind of guarantee this coherence um, because all your materials are packaged in a single container. And of course it simplifies the underlying compute infrastructure um, because the infrastructure just needs to run containers doesn't have to necessarily be particularly tightly coupled to a application um, or other things. And one of our other key findings through um, uh, the community consultation um, is that is this thing called the community framework, which tends to be 
um, uh, unique, I guess, to the way Kubernetes and container infrastructures work. And the thing that this framework uh, allows you to do, which we discovered, is that it, it kind of lets you think about um, what an infrastructure team does, what an application developer will do, and what an end user will do as three very distinct and separate things. And, and we refer to this in the paper as the, communities, the, the Kubernetes community framework. And the result of the separation is, is kind of, I guess, a bit profound the more you, you tend to think about it. The, the result of the separation is that very little application level knowledge is required of the infrastructure team. Um, little infrastructure knowledge is required of app developers and really no knowledge of the complexities of libraries and software compilation are, are required by the end users. The, the great thing about this is that um, each concern, it means that each of these, I guess, three vertical tiers can be treated and scaled and, and we can do work on these independently of, of the other. So researchers and software engineers can share their containerized tool sets locally, uh, globally, whereas you know infrastructure on how to operate this stuff or ideas on how to operate infrastructure can really be worked on at a national level, as an example. Um, over to you, um, Carmel. Thank you, Steve. Um, so RCOS, why are we looking at it from a, a national level? Well, um, referring back to the paper that Steve mentioned and the community consultation, what we found was that there was five main challenges um, that was um, coming across in relation to the use of containers and orchestration research. So the first challenge was that expertise and experience and practice was isolated and disconnected. So everybody was playing around doing some work with it, but they were doing it within their own institutions or areas. Challenge two was there was diverse deployments, um, which are leading to incompatible um, islands. So one of the key things going back to an earlier slide was on that portability um, and also on that collaboration across institutions. Uh, challenge three is Kubernetes is complex. Um, so expertise and subject matter expertise is required. Uh, challenge for Kubernetes is feature rich, rich and extremely capable. So how do we take advantage of those features. And then challenge five is uh, fair containers are, are rare. So findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable uh, our containers are rare. So the opportunity was for us to enable a collaborative and reproducible research environment and coherency across the different infrastructures. So that was a driver behind setting up ARCOS. And uh, next slide, sorry. So basically what we focus on then is what is what is it on a higher level? So basically we're looking at these four main areas. So community awareness, raising best practice standards, user support and user experience. These were the key four areas that really came out of the um, paper that was pulled together from community feedback. So looking at community awareness, raising, um, as Steve has said, very important, this is community driven, um, but we also needed that national coordination to be able to pull all those elements together. So that's why ARDC became involved as well to look at it from a national part um, and also that international collaboration. Um, best practice standards, so creation of reference implementations, adoption of best practice standards and training of research software engineers. So kind of looking at what we have done previously with the uh, Nectar Research Cloud, um, how do we adopt best practice for deploying containers and orchestration across research? And then user support, how do we ensure that people get the right level of support? Um, so having that trained experts and also being able to direct people on how to use um, you know, tools like Kubernetes um, for impact and then supporting integrated and national support services. Another key element that came out was container registry and other infrastructure. And then last but not least is obviously the user experience. So how do we ensure that there's a positive user experience that is accessible um, and that we have that different um, levels of support uh, which aligns to our user support. So we have regular national user communities and we have uh, various events and user training. So we had a symposium last week. Uh, obviously, we're at this event now, and we have spoken to it at eResearch Australia New Zealand. So moving to the next slide. 
So who is Arcos? So um, Arcos is multi-layered. Um, first off, we have the Arcos Steering Committee who meets on a monthly basis. And that involves ARDC representation, POSI, um, BioCommons, Monash University, and RNET. So very keen for us all to work um, together to deliver this. On the next slide, who is the community group? Well, this community group now meets quarterly. There's over 90 members in this community group. And you can see here from this slide, the representation is quite broad and it is very much on a national level. And that community group is important for us to understand the needs, but also to pull together the best practices, knowledge sharing, et cetera. And next slide. So the last layer that we have is we've set up working groups. These meet on a fortnightly basis, and we have two main working groups at the moment. We have the technical working group, and we have the registry working group. So looking at those two groups, the technical working group is, to what I said earlier, looking at those best practices and standards, referencing implementations, uh, determining what auto shared infrastructure required, development and training, and establishing champions um, of the program to help identify candidates and to identify opportunities to share knowledge a little bit more. And then the registry working group is looking at defining the requirements that we would need for a national registry, and defining the design of a registry and building a national containers registry. And what's key about our cost as well is that it's not about an individual institution providing, for example, a Kubernetes service. It's about looking at it across the e-research community um, and how do we provide it support to move that research community forward, but look at it from a national level. So that's what we've been driving from the community level. And then if we go to the next slide. Um, so basically, how do you get involved? Um, so basically, you could join those community working groups. Um, Andy put a link earlier to our website and also to the Arcos paper. We would love your feedback. Um, we had our symposium last week. Um, so it was on Thursday and uh, Wednesday and Thursday last week. So we will be preparing a report on that. But what we did see from that symposium is there is huge interest and demand for this. And what we want to be able to do is not just supply and support the technical development, but also supporting and that coordination. And so the coordination is a key element at the moment to be able to pull all those these ideas together. And that's where we need more people involved to be able to contribute to that across, um, across the country, basically. Um, so that's where it's at. Um, please let us know if you have any questions that you would like um, to ask us now. We have um, quite a bit of time. Um, what are your experience? What are your desired use cases? 